recording. Okay. So, um, welcome to our second weekly Liber Arstats Club. Um, on the email, you have a link to this Google Doc uh, spreadsheet um, that has um, all the sessions that uh, we're doing and that we have planned for the future. I know some of you, this is your first time joining us. Um, at the very top, you can find a link to our onboarding website that uh, I have some plans on updating, but uh, those plans need time. Um, we have our Liber Arstats Club website, uh, Twitter account. We also have a code of conduct. Um, and so because some of you are new, I just want to remind everyone that uh, the basic idea of the code of conduct is we want everyone to feel welcome to ask questions and, um, and to feel welcome in this like learning experience, um, because uh, uh, what might be might, what might look like obvious or easy to you might not be the case for other people. So just be mindful of the words you use. Um, I'm trying to do that myself. Um, 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 but yeah, that's the idea of the code of conduct, um, and we might need to update it at some point, like I mentioned last week. Um, okay, so. A week ago, we had our uh, session on R and R Studio, um, and I said it wasn't like your typical R or R Studio introduction. I was uh, basically showing you already some packages that I think are fairly useful, like the use this package, the here package, and the session info package. Um, if you weren't if you weren't able to join us, please use the the recording link, um, and um, there's a slice of material. Since then, uh, we actually have a new person on Andrew Jaffe's group called uh, Luis uh, Huki, who is here with us. Um, and so she has a Windows laptop. So as we spent quite a bit of time yesterday setting up Windows properly to work with Gypsy. Um, I didn't remember everything. So we had to like debug some things. And so the videos are a bit long, but uh, if you're a Windows user, you might be interested in this because this is, uh, what I think is the ideal Windows setup for working with Gypsy. Uh, there's definitely more options and setups, but this is what I think is the ideal one. Um, cool. So today our session is about creating graphs with Gplot2. And I have a link here to a Google Doc. So I'm gonna close this, uh, well, I'm gonna switch to the Google Doc. which is gonna uh, zoom in so you can see more of this stuff. So, um, um, uh, last time I had kind of my, my set of tabs open and I was just adding the links as we went by. Um, this time I'm going to put them all from the beginning, but, um, uh, I did that. I did it that way last time because I wanted people to follow me. Um, um, but then, uh, 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 I got the feedback that it was also maybe a bit hard to, to like see me and then see where I was clicking and everything. So this where I have all the links already. Um, in future versions, I will, if I have more time, then I will, you know, like to make some little presentations or stuff. Or, uh, but um, but this is uh, something I can put together um, uh, fairly fast. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about uh, ggplot2 and related packages. Um, so just as a test. Um, on your Zoom window, if you go to the participants, um, can you um, uh, can you click on the yes button if you've heard about ggplot2 and the no button if you haven't heard about it? Okay, uh, so there's 18, I have 10 responses. Um, eight of you say yes, uh, two of you say no. Um, that's okay, uh, so, uh, um, so the all the yeses, please bear with me a little bit. Um, so um, I'll explain what ggplot2 is. Uh, but first of all, um, if you already have R open, um, you can run this, you can copy paste this command to install any packages that you might not have um, that we'll use later in the session. So you can um, start doing that on the background by like copy copying that and pasting it into your R or R studio uh, window. So I can here, here, right click, copy 
then uh, paste and install. Um, I'll run that myself. I mean, I'm pretty sure I already had the packages, but um, cool. So um, the first link here uh, is to the R Studio cheat sheets, which uh, we looked at um, uh, last week. R Studio cheat sheets is something that I uh, recommended because um, uh, they have these PDF files, these nice PDF files with like um, basically what you would take if you were going to take an exam on any of this. Uh, packages, right? There's a lot of information there. Um, one of them is the, um, uh, where is it? Um, I think I went for it. Uh, let me find it again. Um, data strings, apply, data port. I'm not, okay, data visualization cheat sheet. So this one, um, actually this link doesn't work anymore. It's, um, uh, but we'll use the updated link. Um, so this cheat sheet over here, which is the second link I have here, you can download it to your computer uh, to open it. Um, I have mine already downloaded from last week. And if you look at it, uh, if you're a person that said yes to ggplot2, this might be useful because maybe you uh, uh, already know what to do and what to look for. If you're new, this is like, whoa, there's a ton of stuff, right? Um, it's maybe a lot more information than what you would need, right? So that's why, um, uh, I mean, after this session, maybe the ggplot2 cheat sheet will be useful, but before it, it might, it's not really as useful because um, we, you know, we need to get familiarized with some of this language. Um, okay. So that's, um, there's different, you know, there's a lot of material about ggplot2. It's one of the most popular R packages. Um, um, there's actually uh, a former genomics person uh, uh, who left genomics uh, uh, called Thomas Lynn Peterson. Um, uh, he's a visualization expert and uh, he made a lot of contributions to ggplot2 and then basically our studio was like okay you're really good and they hired him away um so uh thomas lynn peters peterson he um um he recently made a series of youtube videos um these were the first youtube videos uh, he ever did like live of them i mean sorry, sorry he made uh like youtube live videos and stuff one of them is um i'm sorry the first one is like two hours and a half pause 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 right pause oh oh okay there cool so uh um this is a place to go if you really want a very in-depth um introduction to ggplot2, what it does, um, and um, the motivation behind it. Um, but here there's a quick example of um, how ggplot2 code looks like. Uh, if you use a ggplot2 function, you specify some data set, then you just specify what you wanna do with that data set. In this particular case, uh, we wanna have a layer of points and use the geom point function for that. Once you have the layer of points, you specify some aesthetics for that layer, where here we say that X, we want it to be the eruptions of this faithful data set, Y, we want to be the waiting time, and then color, we want to be, you know, do something with anything that has eruptions less than three. Right? Um, that is the syntax of this, um, and it's explained in that video, but it's also explained in, um, did I miss link to this? Um, I didn't put the link. Um, um, I had it already open in one of my tabs. Um, let me fix that. Um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, so there's this there's this book called ggplot2 elegant graphics for data analysis which explains the theory behind ggplot2 uh, the idea was to make something that um, um, has a, um, a set of rules that's the um, 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 uh, where do we have it the grammar um, this part mastering the grammar on the left side uh, a set of rules for making plots and, and but they wanted to make plots in a way that you could build on top of them right so instead of just making the image and providing the image to someone they actually uh, designed this whole like data structure such that you can uh, keep all the data that you need for making the image but like organize it in a very particular way and so so one part of it is uh, making the code for, for, for this structure. And then another part of, of the code is like, okay, now that I have the structure of how the data looks like, uh, make the actual like uh, PNG or PDF image. Um, and this is, I think, uh, one of the biggest reasons why ggplot2, the package, became such an important player in R. Because like, uh, uh, like I mentioned last week, R is a lot, a lot of it is about like um, uh, expanding on other people's work through packages, through these like small libraries. Um, and so we're actually gonna look at, you know, uh, some of these um, uh, packages that are built on top of ggplot2. Uh, now, you know, the, the book is free now. There's a website version that is free. This is the third edition of the book. Um, um, I think I bought the first one on paperback. Um, oh, like, um, I don't know, five or six years ago, something like that. Uh, but um, uh, if you want, like, if this is a book that uh, is recommended, if you want to get into the theory of, of things behind your plot too. If you're just starting, I have a better book for you. Um, uh, and that's this R graphics book. This next link. Um, I'm going to close some of the other tabs. Um, well, um, okay, so this R graphics book also is free online. This is the second edition of it. Um, I actually bought the, the first edition twice because I lent it to someone and then they, they lost it or something. <laughs> um, but this is, if we were meeting in person, I would be like, here, like, this is a great book. And the way I learned to do a lot of things was I would just keep the book find a plot that I that looked like what I wanted to make and then figure out the code behind that plot. And this is basically what I recommend that you guys do also. Um, uh, now this is an online version and it's free, so you don't even have to buy the book. Um, uh, but it's just, uh, it's a lot harder to skim the book fast, right? Because now you have to click a bunch of links uh, to then find like a plot that you like. Uh, then once you find the plot that you like, uh, then you can like um, find the code behind it. So uh, uh, the main person behind this book is uh, his name is Winston Chang. Uh, he's also at our studio. And he's part of what's called the R Core team, which is the team that actually develops R. Um, so um, well, so far, it's been a lot of like, oh, here's here's there's a lot of things you can do. So. I'm actually going to go to, we're going to start doing some of the code in this book. And uh, I'm going to open this link, recipe quick disaster. Um, so <clears throat> that's um, um, subsection 2.1 of the, of the R graphics cookbook. And um, it has some code for us. So um, let me make, my R studio window bigger. Um, so I'm going to be making some plots. I also want to see them. So um, in my R studio, I've only run the installation code for all these packages. Um, I'm going to go to file at the very top, new file, new R script. Um, and I'm doing this such that I can um, um, 
copy some of the code from the website. And I could put it like on the on the console terminal, but maybe I want to make some comments, right? Or maybe you guys want to make some comments, right? So this is from that location. Okay. Um, let me zoom in a little bit more so you can easily read the code. So now that I pasted it, uh, I'm going to use the shortcut that we saw last week, which was uh, Command and enter on Mac computers, control enter on Windows computers for evaluating the code, right? So here, I just remade this graph that they have on the book on my own on R and my own computer, right? Uh, so this is like a, a you know plot that we make very frequently where we have an X and a Y variable and we want to compare them, right? Um, this particular plot. Uh, is made using uh, base graphics. The plot function is from the base package. Uh, I'm sorry, for the graphics package, which is one of the base ones in R. Um, and it has a particular syntax where you specify the X variable first and the Y variable second. And that's what we get. Now let's make the ggplot2 equivalent. So I'm gonna copy that code from the website. There's actually this little uh, uh, copy button. So I'm gonna use that one over there. Then over here, I want to paste. Um, um, and so we're going to load the ggplot2 package with the library command. And then using ggplot2, ggplot, sorry, the function uh, on the empty cars data set, which is the same data set that we used before. We're going to specify the aesthetics where we want on the x axis to have the weight, on the y axis, the mpgs. And then we want to add some points with geom underscore point. Right? So this is a basic um, um, syntax of how all of this looks and it gets printed, right? But I'm, now I'm going to do something slightly different that is not in the book, which I'm going to assign the output of this into an object called x. If I do this using the str function, um, sorry, this is really big. Um, um, check structure of the ggplot object. Um, so this is a fairly complicated object, um, and this is what is I think really the the secret um, the secret um, key ingredient that made ggplot really useful is that it provides all the data here. It also provides all the functions uh, for making the plot, for interpreting the data into you know, points and lines and grids and all of that. And so that way we can edit this stuff later on, uh, or we could have a package that makes um, some visualizations on top of it. Okay, so that's the basic syntax for ggplot2. Um, oops, I don't wanna go there. Um, now, one of the packages that builds on top of ggplot2 is called uh, cowplot. Cowplot has its own little nice little website explaining how to use cowplot and how to install it. Um, you can see over here it has 172,000 downloads per month, so it's widely used. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, and it says, it's like, oh, this is for help uh, creating publication quality figures, right? You know, everyone at Libra will love that, right? All the admins, <laughs> they want papers, right? Or publications or, 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 qual or high quality things, right? Um, um, I'm gonna go to the reference section on the top. And this ex uh, website ex uh, has links to several of the functions of the package. We're, gonna, we're not gonna look at all of that. I'm only gonna focus on one called plot underscore grid. Um, why this one? That's because uh, we end up using it quite a bit. Okay. So uh, I'm going on my R Studio. Uh, I wanna say like, oh, the code, code the, the next code comes from this location over here. Um, and so I'm gonna copy over here to my clipboard 
the example code that we see on the website. Um, it's actually quite a bit of code um, uh, because it, it copied um, the, on the full website, it copied the code for all of this. <laughs> I'm not gonna um, uh, recreate all of that. So um, let's go over some of this code. So uh, on line 17 that I copied over here, we load the ggplot2 um, um, package, which we already had. Then lines 19 to 21, we create a little table of data. Uh, we call it DF. Um, this is just an example a table that has five columns and 10 rows. Um, and the columns are X, Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4. And they have some numbers for us to, to uh, make some plots with. Uh, next, line 23, we're going to make a plot. Um, if you notice, that this is fairly, a fairly similar plot to the one we made already on our ggplot2 example. So this is um, ggplot, the data that we're using, the aesthetics, what is going to be our x variable? What is going to be our y variable in 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 our in my line twenty three? That's uh, y one. And then what do we want to do with that data? In this case, we want to make some points. So that's uh, we use the geom underscore point. Now, just like I did on, on lines eleven and twelve, where I saved the, the result of ggplot into an object, we're doing the same over here. Now, in this case, instead of calling it x, it's called p one for plot one. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna run plot one, plot two, three, four, uh, and then also five. Um, okay. So one through four is basically the same thing we did before. It, the only thing that changes is the y variable. One of them was y1, then y2, then y3, then y4, right? So now we have four um, plot objects from ggplot2. Uh, so where does calplot come into play? Comes into play in this plot underscore grid function. Uh, line 31 makes the plot grid where with the objects p1, p2, p3, and p4. So let's run that. Oh, it didn't run. My error says could not find the function plot underscore grid. Why is that? Because I forgot to load the calplot package. Um, well, once we have that, sorry, now we can actually use the plot underscore grid function, right? This is a function that lives only on the calplot package, not on the ggplot package. Um, and so it took a little bit of time, um, but now we have a plot over here that has uh, four little panels on it. We have x versus y1, x versus y2 versus y3, and then y4, right? So this is something that we do quite a bit uh, ourselves, which is like, okay, uh, we have all these plots and we wanna uh, put them in a little like, you know, thing together um, in a single, like, let's say a PDF. So that's where we call, uh, the plot underscore grid function comes into play. And you might notice that like, um, like some of the things I use, I really only use a, a, a package sometimes for one function, right? And that's, um, but this is, you know, is the beauty of the ggplot2 framework, which is um, they maintain the ggplot2 package, and then that allowed a lot of different people or creative people to come up with ways to uh, enhance the, the ggplot2 ecosystem by making their own functions and packages. Why? Because we have the data behind it and the structure behind it. Um, okay. So that was um, calplot and calplot grid. Another package is called, um, so this is controversial how you, uh, how you um, pronounce it. Some people call it ggally, and some, part, some people call it ggally, how you pronounce the name. Uh, um, I won't say which one I prefer. <laughs> I'll let you decide which one you like. Okay, so this is another package, um, which they called it uh, extension extension to ggplot2. Right, um, they have several functions themselves. Um, they have like, a, for example, one of them called ggmatrix. 
But the one that I want to use is the ggpairs function. Um, again, I'm only showing you some of the functions uh, or plots that I think you know might be interesting for you. So I'm going to uh, paste some of the code. Actually, a lot of this stuff I didn't run. So I'm going to delete um, a lot of that extra code. Just going to keep the stuff that I actually did run uh, from the calplot example. From this website. OK. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is from 2015, right? It's, a, it's been a while. Um, and so they have some example here. It doesn't have the little like uh, copy the clipboard button. But so I'm just going to manually select it, copy it, and paste it. Um, they have an example here using data from the reshape package. Um, um, uh, Luca emailed me asking why reshape and not reshape two. Um, we're not really using the reshape packages in any way. We're just we just want the data called tips, the example data called tips from that package. So I'm going to load that data. Um, and then uh, I won't make the same mistake again. I'm going to load the GG, GG um, Alley package. Uh, using the library function. And um, let's explore the tips um, data. So this is a more complicated example that has 244 rows, seven columns. Um, and the columns are total bill, tip, sex, smoker, day, time, and size. Um, I'm sure the research package explains what the data is. Uh, now, um, they use it here for the ggpairs function uh, from gg alley. Uh, and I'm just going to run that on line 38. You'll notice that we're just not, we're not only like just running that function um, um, by itself. We're actually assigning the, up, the result from that into an object. We're doing this because uh, now we have a, um, uh, um, the GG Alley uh, package extends uh, ggplot2 and created new um, R objects. In particular, they created a new one called a GG matrix one. Um, and why did they do this? Because they also want people to build on top of their package right? uh, and expand things. Now, uh, the GG. Um, um, all these um, all these packages define how to actually uh, visualize this data. So I'm just going to print the PM object, and that you know this actually is a much bigger thing to print, so it takes a while. <laughs> um, this uh, um, and I'm going to make everything bigger here, just so we can see it. Um, um, Oh, is it still running? 96%, 98. Mm, um, <clears throat> In theory, it ran already, um, but my I'm not seeing the picture. Mm. Let me zoom into it. Um, maybe this happened because I resized my R Studio window. Okay. Um, so what this uh, plotting function made is it made a ton of plots for us. I'm just going to make it even bigger. Um, um, hopefully it didn't kill it. Okay, oh, here it goes. So I'm going to use the annotate utilities uh, from Zoom. 
Um, let's use pink. Okay, so <clears throat> this function creates a lot of stuff. We can see on the diagonal one type of thing. Um, so oh, zoom, zoom is getting in my way. Sorry. Um, so this plot, what it does is it plots all your seven variables against themselves again, right? And so uh, on the one one quadrant, we have total bill against total bill. And so at this point, uh, it decides, okay, this is a continuous variable. Let's plot a density for it. Um, um, uh, let's say uh, sex versus sex. There's, you know, these are only two, this categorical, let's just uh, plot little bars for it. Um, uh, so it decides what to plot on the diagonal based on uh, what the actual variable is. Now in other cells, uh, for example, um, For example, here on the quadrant uh, that is total bill versus sex, it says, okay, the y axis is total bill, the x axis, sorry, it's a it's total bill, which is a continuous variable. The x axis is sex, which is a discrete one. So I'm gonna make box plots for it. Um, but um, um, mm -hmm. But if we flip things around, so we look at over here, where on the x-axis we have total bill and on the y-axis we have sex, it decides to make little um, 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 bar plots that look like a histogram type of thing. And so this package is really useful. You have multiple uh, variables and you want it to choose automatically what's the best plot to make for each of your types of variables, each of your combinations, and um, you can explore them. Obviously, this is really compute intensive. So this was, you know, took, this took several seconds and it's, it's only a small data set of 240 something rows and seven columns, right? <laughs> if you run this with a larger data set, you're gonna need more computational resources. Um, but it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice uh, function for exploring all your data. And it's built on top of GEplot2. Um, okay. Um, another package that is, that you might be of interest is um, ggpubr. Okay, so GPUB R also has a little um, nice little website. It has 157,000 downloads per month. So this surprised me. <laughs> it has 2.6 million downloads overall. This surprised me because I, I only recently heard about it, uh, but it's really popular. Um, um, I just didn't know. Um, and so um, one section is called box plots and violin plots. Um, so I'm gonna copy part of the code into um, uh, from that website. Um, I'm gonna copy part of that code over here. Um, this um, loads a data set. Uh, I'm gonna to need to load also the ggpub r package. Um, this is again an example data set that has in this case 60 rows um, and three columns. Um, and I'm gonna scroll further down because uh, where it says violent plots with box plots in with box plots inside. I'm gonna copy that. I mean, I could also click here, click here copy the clipboard, um, paste, and let me run that code. Ooh, 
I don't have the my comparisons object uh, where was that defined? That was defined earlier. Oops. Um, sorry, I'm going to copy paste that and rerun the code. Uh, so this package ggpubr has a function called ggviolin um, and some other functions. Um, so now we're running it. We're not saving the object anywhere. We're just going to print it all. Um, I'm going to zoom in. Actually, I don't need to zoom in. This is big enough. And so what did this do? Um, it created box plots for our categorical variable those. The y-axis is len, len, L-E-N for length, I guess. Um, with the violin structure of it, which is for like um, the density of it, I prefer them to just be half violins instead of full violins. Um, but uh, I mean, we would, we would need to get into the details of GGPubR. Um, um, and then it also shows here the crystal Wallis um, statistic results pairwise results, so blue versus yellow, yellow versus orange, and then blue versus orange, with little bars, and then significance um, denoted by uh, stars, which uh, is also a controversial choice uh, for presenting statistical results, but it's used by a lot of people. Um, so this might be a plot you're interested in making, right? Or maybe you're interested in, in making a, a, um, a different version of this plot. But that's powered by ggplot2, and ggpub r um, okay so now we're gonna uh, ex uh, go away a little bit from ggplot2 because um, there's another package that i recently discovered uh, called polychrome why did i discover this um, so polychrome is titled Quali qualitative palettes with many colors i discovered this because um, um, r the R team decided to improve the, the default colors in R. And for R.40 that got released today, um, one of the default color palettes actually uses the polychrome uh, uh, code. Inside this page for polychrome from the CRAN website, we can see under the vignettes bullets, um, there's several options. I'm going to open the one called polychrome. And I opened this one because we see a lot of colors over here, tons of colors. Uh, and um, it's really nice if you're like trying to find some a function that will, you know, uh, choose colors for you. Um, and um, one of them that I've been using, um, trying to find it. Um, oh, I don't see it. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, it's not exemplified in this help file, but um, I'm using one of the functions from this package um, uh, called um, um, uh, what was it called? Oh. Um, uh, palette36.colors. Um, that's a function that I've been using from this polychrome. And that's because that's an automatic palette that, you can, that um, can create up to 36 different colors for you to use. Um, um, whether you like them or not, uh, Kristen can comment. A lot of people sometimes don't like the colors come, that come from here, but uh, we've had a lot of discussions about colors. Uh, but this is one of the packages you, you can use for creating a list of colors in case you don't like any of the default colors that uh, the, um, these functions are using. Um, so, <clears throat> okay. Now, <clears throat> the next one is um, called Plotly. Plotly is, um, uh, the name Plotly, if you Google uh, it, it will first, uh, it, the R version won't show it first. Plotly is um, a set of libraries for um, 
uh, JavaScript for making interactive graphics. And so here, Plotly create interactive web graphics via Plotly.js. This is a package that Carson Sievert made uh, when he was a grad student. Um, this package got so well, so much attention that he started doing consulting. Um, uh, but then uh, I think less than a year ago, or maybe less than a year and a half ago, uh, uh, he joined our studio officially. Um, um, and so uh, uh, he wrote a book about Plotly and has been uh, widely successful in the R world. Um, now, um, this Plotly package has uh, multiple uh, associated websites. Uh, I'm gonna click on the github.com slash ropensci slash Plotly uh, uh, link. Um, um, I'm opening that one because it has some nice examples um, um, of what it can do. Um, and the idea here is um, um, you can run ggplot, the function from ggplot2, um, make some visualization and save it into an object. Once you save it into an object, then you can use the ggplotly function from the plotly package, and that will create interactive version, interactive version. So I'm gonna copy that over here. Mm. So back, copy, paste, and let's try running this. Um, now, why would you wanna make a plotly um, graphic, an interactive one? Maybe you want to do this for um, a lab meeting or a, or a meeting with uh, some of your colleagues that are like, you know, you have colleagues that are like, they look at a scatter plot and they're like, oh, what's that point over there? Can you tell me what it is? And that way here, um, um, you can actually mouse over and it's going to show you information. So this one was just like, um, uh, some um, some levels of this uh, a contour plot for uh, where some um, fateful um, eruptions I think are, um, um, and so you can see the density of them, and you can mouse over stuff. Um, you can also like pan and to decide to move things around if you want. Um, you can select a box of points. Um, you can lasso select um, a contour of points. Um, so, you know, a lot of these tools are not really being well exemplified by this in this data set. So I'm gonna use gplotly with my X object from before. Um, um, this takes a second to run. My computer's fans are going full power. Um, all right, so this is, you know, it looks really similar to the plot we had before, but now I can mouse over and actually get the weight and MPG values for this empty cars data set uh, by just mousing over the points. So, oh, I have a, I see a raise hand, sorry. Uh, you wanna, um, I'll mute and ask the question. Uh, yeah, sure. I put this in the chat, but when you were explaining the different sort of like pre-made color palettes, I was wondering if there's any like colorblind friendly ones. I know that that's like a bit of a struggle with some journals is that they like want that, but it's hard to know what people can see if you can see all the colors. So I was wondering if there was like pre-made lists like that. Yes, that's a great question. Now, um, uh, color blindness is actually, a, there's a family of different uh, related um, uh, disorders, let's say. I'm not sure that's the correct name um, or disease. Um, um, so um, uh, there's actually 
And on the Biconductor Slack, some people uh, were um, discussing some of this recently. But one package is called Viridis Light. Um, and Viridis Light makes, um, helps you make plots like this that are also color blank friendly. And so a lot of people use the Viridis Light um, for color blindness, uh, color blind friendly uh, colors. Uh, but the issue is not only about being, being able to distinguish like red versus green, it also comes to sometimes um, how uh, some how some people see the 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 intensity of the color. Um, so what is really dark or very light type of thing. Um, and there's there's several like uh, actual research papers on color, um, how to do it. So I'm going to add the link over here. for previous light. Uh, this is actually one of the most used packages for that type of, uh, for making uh, plots like that. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm gonna lower your hand. Well, does you have a second question? <laughs> um, okay, so Plotly. Oh yeah, we made a ggplotly x. Um, okay, so now uh, I can do the last select select the set of points and uh you know this is not showing me any information uh on like right now but you could actually uh write code that says like okay once you've selected these points make a second plot that does only something with the subset of points that you selected um you can like uh, box select some points um, and you can see that it grays out the rest of the points that are not um, on this window um you can zoom in, zoom out, et cetera. And then you can also, um, on the camera here, download the plot as a PNG static file in case you want to sh uh, share it with someone. Um, cool. So <clears throat> the last link I have for you, sorry, there's also uh, before the, the next to last link is a Plotly R website, uh, which I didn't really, um, want to spend too much time on because even though it has some nice examples, um, um, it takes, uh, uh, it can take a while to run any of these ones. They can get uh, a bit computationally intensive, some of them, but you know, this is a really great, great place. If you want to like look at different plots, scheme, like, you know, kind of like imagine that you had a book and you're just flipping the pages quickly to see if there's any plot that looks like something you want to make. Right. Um, and then you can dive into the code or ask for help. Um, so one, the last thing I wanted to show you is um, something we made um, for our recent paper with uh, Kristen Maynard um, and other people here uh, called a Spatial LIBD. Um, so I preloaded this because it takes a while to load. Um, and so this is a visualization that uh, that takes a lot of this stuff and puts it together. So um, this is a plotly made uh, visualization. It's a ton of points, so it takes a while to load. You can mouse over and it will tell you information about in the left side is like the gene, the number of cells, sorry, per spot um, on the spatial. So that particular dot has 13 cells. Um, let's say one over here has four, five, three, there's a ton of points. Um, uh, on the right side, I'm using the polychrome uh, uh, colors. Um, actually here I'm showing 14 different values. So uh, I, you know, I'm using this function to uh, automatically create for me 14 different sets of colors. And I can go and still plot like, um, like, uh, it can handle up to 36. I only have up to 28 in my case. I'm not going to do that because it will um, take a bit of time to run. Um, actually, on the left side here, I'm using the Viridis Light package for having a color friendly, uh, color blind friendly um, continuous palette. Um, and 
we have on the background a histological image that was uh, we um, this is really a code from 10x genomics they gave us some code for adding um, a ggplot tool layer with a background image um, so this is like an example of where all of the stuff that I've been mentioning comes together into play um, and it's all interactive such that like uh, we can select some points with a lasso tool let me try to select the green ones over here and so this is a fairly computationally intensive thing and uh, recording on zoom also takes resources um, okay um, so we'll take a, a, a couple seconds to upload to update because uh, okay there he goes so I selected some points and it automatically updated the other tree plots type of thing, right? So all of this is built using um, all these different tools. Um, cool, so um, with that, I'm gonna end the recording portion of today, one second.